Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and the time has come to meet the Motormaster of 2015, Combiner Wars Motormaster, a Voyager toy that's a retool of Combiner Wars Optimus, if Optimus isn't actually the retool. Who knows? He came in the second wave and showed up way early alongside Blackjack. Let's do this comparison thing right up front, because holy crap, while Motormaster shares a bunch of rear and jointed parts with Optimus, there are metric gob loads of new pieces here. Almost every single part that was red on Optimus has been replaced with a new piece of sculpting on Motormaster. The windows are even different. The grills are even different. He straight up has two new hinged flappy thingies up on the roof. This was where Combiner Wars introduced me to just how far the line was planning to take the idea of a character retooling. Anyway, Motormaster's got a whole lot of gray and purple, with just a hint of black. This is a shift away from the big black cab of the G1 original, with the character clearly realizing that he was just a giant transforming gray trailer with his feet stuck on the front. The color layout is fairly monotone, but also matches the grays of the paintable and less easily paintable plastics in a way that hides them much better than on Optimus, even though Motormaster still only has partial paintwork on his windshields. Instead of a two-piece faux engine block, Motormaster's weapons stick together, plug into the back, and make no attempt to hide their violent identities. I guess I can respect that. The two flaps on the roof fold forwards! Yeah! Aside from that, the transformation is identical to Optimus Prime's. I mean, there's a lot of retooling on this guy, but he still shares the same design skeleton. He's not crazy. Or is he? In robot mode, Motormaster's color layout gets a lot more interesting, with black and purple busting up the sea of grey a lot more effectively than in his vehicle mode. He does still have Optimus Prime's thing of being really wide and kind of flat up above the waist, but something about his overall look makes him wear the silhouette a lot better than the Autobot leader. I think the head sculpt helps a lot. It's a proper Motormaster head in a box with a slope and size that plays well with his beefed out proportions. The face is kind of weird, looking somewhere between Ashley Wood's Tomorrow Kings and a man who just simultaneously smelled a rank fart and identified who brought it into the room. Motormaster's got a gun and a sword, both silver coated and covered in jagged ridges. Is it obvious that the gun's barrel is a big handle? Maybe it is, Sherlock. Anyway, let's compare him to Prime one more time. Remember how much retooling there was in vehicle mode? All of that work is three times as apparent in robot mode. Nearly every visible surface from the waist up is completely new sculpting on Motormaster, right down to things that could easily be overlooked, like on his forearms, the insides of the flaps on the sides of his forearms, the abdomen, etc. I'm enormously impressed by how far this retool pushed the process, as Motormaster makes sure you know he isn't just an Optimus look-alike in a box hat. Being skeletally identical to Optimus Prime, what does Motormaster have that's unique to him posability-wise? Well, his box head is also on a ball joint, and I think it's got ever so slightly more range than Optimus's head did. Or, and maybe the box shape is causing any amount of movement to have just a bit of built-in dynamicism over Optimus's more regular looking head. But uh, this, I feel like there is some legitimate swagger here. Like he's just barking orders and rapping about his hard life. Uh, the shoulders are pretty much the same as Optimus's. Same unfortunately low number of detents up there. Same 90 degree elbows. His waist feels actually a little bit tighter than Optimus's, and that's kind of cool. But then the hips are where things are identical, yet slightly different, and maybe a bit for the worse. His hip ratchets are way less tight than Optimus's. Now, Optimus's were tight to the point of, like, click, click, click. These are the complete opposite, where... Like, they'll hold position if I move them around a bunch, but then if I tap it, it goes all the way... Like, it doesn't hold. And, uh... This one holds a bit better. See, but this one does not. Once again, thank goodness Nonephthandius has some replacement ratchet innards uh, on the way. Um, but in this case, the springs even are a bit messed up. And I know this is a common thing across not just my Motormaster, but other people's Motormasters. Uh, the thing to do in there is pop all this open and add a little bit more push on the spring by, like, putting a, a folded up bit of paper or something inside there. Whenever I get the non Thandius replacement gears, that's when I'm going to do all that. I'll try to videotape it if I remember. If I don't, I apologize. The knees and thigh swivels are otherwise the same as Optimus, as is the twinkle toe joint. And, uh, yeah, having looser hips is giving me, um, I guess, 
a, a version of the experience of just removing the ratchets altogether because I'm able to actually get this guy to get between his ratchets a little bit more easily. Thus, he can actually make use, especially with a thigh, a thigh twist, make more use of the sculpted A stance. But um, the story of this mold is... I sure am looking forward to replacing the gears with ones that have more teeth. Transformation to torso mode is identical to Ultra Prime's, though Motormaster's extra roof flaps allow for Menasaur's shoulders to look a little cleaner. Unfortunately, through all the retooling, Motormaster lost the solidly locking tabs that Prime had on his forearms. They lack an extra little ridge of plastic, and the result is... Well, moving one of Menasaur's arms often results in his entire torso tearing apart, unless you hold it together. Also, Motormaster's looser hips can wreak havoc on Menasaur's stability once all the limbs are locked in place. This is all fixable, but it sucks to have to deal with it if you aren't someone who's up for toy modification. Anyway, Menasaur's head sculpt has a similarly odd expression on its face as Motormaster's, and has traded its samurai horns for Viking God horns! The helmet's also weirdly... Round. I don't know, it looked off in photos, but I kind of like it in person. The chest looks a lot like the old G1 minicar chest plate when it's closed up, and contains Age of Extinction Galvatron detailing when it's open. I don't get it either, but hey, there are worse chests to mimic, man. Oh, also, Motormaster's weapons combine into a larger sword from Menasaur. Are you surprised? Was anyone surprised? I don't think so. One last time, I just want to point out that Menasaur's chest, abdomen, stick, and crotch plate are all unique pieces of sculpting to him, giving him even more of his own identity through the use of heaping spoonfuls of retooling. Also, his hips still look stupid in the stock configuration, so... Ah, much better. The enormous shoulder line works wonders with the imagery of Menasaur, taking a brute of a combiner and amping him up to legitimate powerhouse measurements. With a nicer hip transformation, I've been won over by the look of this guy in person over Superion. Unfortunately, his stock hip ratchets make him quite a chore to actually keep standing during posing and play, and his tiny ankle tiltless Combiner Wars feet don't help, so he requires some non-F the Glog hip ratchets at the least. As far as looks are concerned, Motormaster and Menasaur are easily my preference over Optimus and Ultra Prime. There's more visual cohesion, more intense sculpting, and better masking of the parts that couldn't be painted up for one reason or another. I'm not sure who's a retool of whom, but both versions of this Voyager release showcase a degree of parts variation that I haven't been as impressed by since Generation Springer and Sandstorm. I was not expecting this much unique sculpting, mostly because I assumed the whole Combiner Wars gimmick was going to eat most of the figure budget this year, but man am I happy to have been wrong! And spoiler alert, the reshelling levels of retooling aren't limited to the Voyagers of this line. Anyway, Motormaster isn't all good news. While he and Menasaur look better, Optimus and Ultra Prime felt categorically better to me in many ways. Primarily, the superior forearm tab locks for the torso mode and the stronger stock hip ratchets. I really hope that Motormaster's unexpected structural shortcomings are rectified for the Unite Warriors release, so that at least one version of this version of the mold comes out up to par. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and the Combiner Wars journey very plottingly continues on in this channel. Wave 2's remaining Stunticons await review, and let me tell you, they have all got wheels!